Hey guys, how are you? So, one of the biggest problems people have when they're getting into the coding game as a developer is getting that first job. That is the big hurdle. Once you get that first job, it opens up the whole world to you in terms of subsequent jobs. You see, I've been hiring people for decades now. When you hire a new developer, you don't want somebody who's no good, right? You want somebody who's capable, who can hit the ground running. The worst thing you can have is a junior dev developer going in there messing with the code base and screwing everything up or, or writing bad code to begin with. So as a junior developer, what can you do to maximize the opportunities to get a job? Well, there's two things you can do. Number one, you can first learn the web stack because I think the web stack offers the broadest opportunities. Once you develop your web stack skills, as HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, and I would say do some PHP because it's great for freelance. Then what you do is you build your promotional website. Number two, you go out there with that promotional website and you go offer your skills to a local nonprofit, local independent coffee shop, butcher, garage, whatever, small business, and you offer to fix up their website, build them a site, something simple. You don't want to spend two months on this. This is all there to A, develop some skills, B, uh, develop your portfolio. So you can show this portfolio to people. So that's something I've been teaching for years is what you gotta do. This is what I teach in my mentoring program. But here's another interesting strategy that just occurred to me, well, it was actually revealed to me by somebody in my live stream from uh, just yesterday. My first job as a Rails developer, I decided to go for Rails path because it seems there's a lot of demand in that, at least on LinkedIn. They hired me with no experience, just an interview. See, that's that's a good point. That's a good point, Gabriel. So, it's not always wise to go for what's hot in the job market. So for example, Rails is no longer hot, although there's a lot of legacy Rails out there and uh, a lot of places. And so since developers, new developers, are not interested in learning Ruby and Rails, I know this is gonna, people are gonna faint when I say this. It could be a very lucrative for you to learn Ruby and Rails, like he just said, because there's a lot of jobs but a lot of people don't want to learn Ruby, so supply and demand, uh, not so many developers, they're gonna take juniors, so that might be a way. That's a good thing. Thanks for bringing, up, uh, bringing, thanks for bringing that up, Gabriel. That's a great uh, strategy, right? You learn Ruby, and you get one of those Ruby jobs, which you're gonna be paid well, and that's a way to get your experience. And then if, if Ruby ever dies out for you, you don't like it, you just pivot to something else very quickly. It brings up another myth. A lot of people, a lot of people, they're worried about which language they should learn. It's really not that relevant because once you learn how to program, you learn how to program. Everybody knows that uh, Ruby, the programming language in Rails, dirty old Ruby, it's lost its shine. People go, I don't want to learn Ruby. So all these new developers for years now, they don't want to touch Ruby. But here's the thing. In the early 2000s, mid-2000s, Ruby was pretty popular, and there's a lot of Ruby code out there, a lot of Ruby apps out there, but there's no new Ruby developers being developed. Therein lies your in to software development. If you remember basic economics, economics 101, it's all about supply and demand. Price is determined by that. How much supply you have of something versus how much demand. So Ruby, even though it's, uh, it's fallen out of favor in the last many years, there's that old code base that's sitting around, right? So, and there's a lot of people who still use Ruby, but no new developers. So somebody just said on the live stream yesterday that they were able to land an entry-level job as a Ruby developer uh, through LinkedIn, even though they had no prior experience, it was pretty easy to get the job. Why? Because they're desperate for Ruby developers. I'm not a big Ruby advocate, as you know, but that might be a route for people to consider. You find a technology that there is a demand, but it's not popular, so you can jump in, start making money, get your foot in the door. Again, the key, remember, to becoming a developer is to get that first job. So whether you're building full stack apps with Ruby, or PHP, or Python, or Java, it's irrelevant, as long as you know how to build full stack apps and you can execute on this stuff. 
So one way to get that first job is to go to Ruby route. I know, that's heresy on my channel. I have all my little Ruby jokes that I make, but that is an interesting and viable opportunity. And I don't have a Ruby course to sell, right? But it's an interesting, viable opportunity there. Again, that doesn't change what I was talking about before, where you uh, learn your web stack, you build that site, you go do two to three small portfolio sites for free. But if you learn Ruby, do some basics, again, and then apply to Ruby jobs, there's a reasonable probability that you will have some success there. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't have any hard data except for that anecdote, but that seems uh, a reasonable, it seems like it's a reasonable hypothesis, you know? It's um, using my uh, business thinking skills there. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. That's how you crack into the market as a new dev. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Steph. If you want to learn more about my mentoring program or you want to check out my Discord channel or whatever, I got all kinds of links down below. Thanks for watching. And um, I'm recording this on Friday, so have a great weekend.